Hey guys, welcome to the show today. Uh, today I'm going to share with you three really cool things that I've been getting lots of questions about. The first one is uh, the importance of tracking and measuring uh, your fitness and health, and also, any, also anything, your fitness and health, and also anything. Uh, the second one it has to do with goal setting. And the third one is the importance of visualization. So I'm going to break down into each one of these things for you right now, okay? So first, the importance of tracking and measuring your fitness and health, um, and again, any area of your life. Why is it so important? Why is it critical? Well, the great Peter, Peter Drucker, I don't know if you know who that is, but he is an awesome management consultant. He's a f business leader in the world. And he basically says, he's what gets measured gets managed. What does that mean? Well, all great athletes, all great performers, all great anything, they measure everything all, all the time, what they're doing, right? So basically, they go into something with a pre program or a plan, right? They go through that and then they after that they do kind of what you call an after action review, right? Basically, you can call it anything you want, but that's what I like to call it. And after that, you basically look at what you did and you notice what worked, what didn't work, and you keep track of it, right? So for the next time, that's data. Data is powerful stuff. Um, and so for the next time you go into another program or another workout or another whatever it is you're doing, you can basically learn from that data, what worked for you, what didn't, and fine tune and refine it for the next time. Same deal. Then you go to the, do, do it again, do another action, action after, after action review, notice what worked, what didn't, fine tune it, boom, and the cycle continues. This is how you become the best in whatever you do. This is what everybody does. Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, if you're talking about the world of basketball, if you're talking about bodybuilders, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the best of the best. Businessmen, uh, who does this? All financial traders, like I'm sure, uh, uh, what's his name? Paul Tudor Jones. He's one of the best traders in the world. He made half a billion dollars in a day. Um, Warren Buffett does this like a madman. So fine-tuning, measuring, tracking, very important. Start doing it. How do you do it, actually, before I jump to the next subject? The, the way to do it is basically decide what you're going to do, come up with your plan, your action plan, do it, and then notice what worked, right? So if I say I'm going to, if it's going to exercise every day, I'm going to exercise for an hour a day, right? That's basically more of a generic measurement, but it's still a measurement, right? A measurement is basically a, f a quantitative action that you take that you can actually say, hey, did I do this or not? Did I exercise for an hour today or not? You have to say yes or no. You can also obviously get more and more detailed when it comes down to like the specifics of a workout program, right? So you say, you say, I'm doing a hypertrophy workout program and I'm doing 12 sets of this exercise with this load, with this rest period, with this, 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 right? That is more fine uh, tuned and more detailed and you're more than welcome to do that as well. So those are kind of some tactics on how to uh, track and measure. Number two, goal setting. What is, so people ask me, what should I do for goal setting, right? Like, I notice lots of people have tons of goals, right? And that's not the way to go about it. You should only have three to five at a time, right? And they shouldn't all be major goals because two reasons. First of all, why you should only have three to five at a time is your brain can only focus on seven plus or minus things at a time consciously and it's going to go all over the place, right? Sometimes your goals, if you have this major goal to make $100,000 a year, if you have this major goal to get like lose 50 pounds of body fat or whatever it is, those those are major goals for people, right? And if you have all these other major goals at the same time or even little goals, even achieving that goal is going to make huge shifts towards all those other goals and they might just not be there anymore. You might not have those same goals anymore. They might wash away because this major goal is serving the needs of all these other goals that you are trying to achieve here. And at the same time, it's a matter of bandwidth and energy, right? You don't want to be a multitasker, right? Like a crazy person with a running around trying to do a million things at one time. Do one thing at a time, right? Rather than having one person focus on 12 problems, you want to have 12 people focus on one problem, right? I know that's obviously just you were talking about, so you want to focus on one thing at a time. Tackle it, move to the next. Tackle it, move to the next. Tackle it, move to the next, right? And I'm not saying you shouldn't have more than one thing going on in your life. Obviously, everybody has more than one thing going on in their life. But when you're focused on that one thing in the area of life, attack it. Be there for it. Focused 100%. 
Then you move on to the next thing for that day or for the week, for whatever it is, right? So you have goals in your relationship, you have goals in your fitness, you have goals in your finances, right? I'd have maybe one goal for each category, and then when you're in that category, when you're on that goal, be 100% focused on that. Don't cheat yourself. And why, um, what was the second thing I said to you guys? The second thing is why only, um, uh, I think that's, I think I covered it actually, because you only want to have three to five at a time, and you want to basically not um, have huge goals. Yeah, that's it, right? So maybe have one big goal, because that'll be like a breakthrough goal that'll make lots of changes for you. And then you don't have to always have crazy goals. Like you can have a small goal, have a weekly goal, have a monthly goal, right? Maybe a goal could be to like go to dinner with some friends and have a good time. That's a good goal. Um, so again, don't get caught up in the trap of, oh, I'm making goals. It means I have to do like this life-changing stuff. No, it doesn't have to be. Learn to set smaller goals and actually... Notice when you accomplish something, acknowledge yourself, feel the success of you actually doing that. Thirdly, the importance of visualizing. What's so important about visualizing? Visualization is a powerful, powerful tool. Everybody knows this. Most people don't practice it. So how do you do it? This is what you got to do. Whatever it is you want to create in your life, if it's a goal, it's very easy to visualize, right? If I asked you, most people say, I don't know how to visualize. Picture a blue house. I'm sure you just thought of a blue house. And if you didn't consciously, which I believe you probably did, you subconsciously saw a blue house in your head. Our minds are powerful things. We just have to learn how to use them. So you are already you already know how to visualize, right? So if it's a goal, whether it's, oh, I want to get an awesome uh, new iPad for Christmas for my friend. So just all you got to see, hear, and feel. Those are the main three modalities. Visualize auditory kinesthetic, right? So what does it look like? Maybe you could see yourself giving this to your friend. Maybe you could hear what he or she says to you when you give it to the person. And what do you feel? How did, what are the feelings you have like actually giving this gift to this person? Like experience it, be in that experience and notice what that's like, right? And another powerful thing is actually, so right now we're projecting into the future for a goal. Sometimes it's cool to project from the future to kind of us already having achieved the goal, right? So maybe if your goal was to uh, and the visualization was to give your friend an iPad for Christmas. Now you can pretend you can pretend it's like January third or January thirtieth, right? And like on the way looking back, like in retrospect, I'm so grateful I was able to give my friend this awesome iPad, right? And like notice what you see here and feel in that moment, right? Like what it was like to do that, as if you already did it. Like your brain is powerful; it's amazing stuff, and you will actually believe and make that a reality much quicker than you ever thought possible. So. So visualizing is important everywhere in your life, finances, relationships, athletes do it all the time, all top performers do, business people do it, start practicing it, set a timeline on it, right? Like maybe two minutes a day, five minutes a day on your top three goals. After each goal, close your eyes, what do I see, what do I hear, what do I feel for this goal being achieved? And just notice what's that, that's like, the more you do it, the more you, the better you get at it. It's all practice, repetition, is the mother of skill. Those are the three things today, guys. Start tracking and measuring what you do, the things that you want. If you want to get better at something, you got to start tracking, measuring, and then you can fine-tune it later with the data you get. Goal setting, three to five at a time. Also, look at them every day, at least twice a day. And thirdly, the importance of visualizing. Start visualizing your goals. Visualize, start practicing. The more you do it, the better you'll get. Hope you guys loved it. See you guys later. Bye.